right place. You're just trying to catch a simple paw lever. Remember, notice how big the bit is on the end of a typical handcuff key. It doesn't have a lot of huge reach down into the cuff. You're just trying to reach just barely, barely, barely inside the keyway, and you should be able to trip that lever. Um, another really common tool, you can use a lot of common things like bobby pins, paper clips, and other stuff to pick a, a, um, uh, you know, pick handcuff locks, even the standard ones or some of the higher end ones. But I don't know if you guys have ever seen the binder clips you can get at Staples, where you can pinch the two pieces and then you flip it around and you clip on paper. Well, there's one particular size that works awesome, and you can pinch it and release that little silver piece, bend it open, and it makes an awesome handcuff key. So um, some people may or may not clip those on their belts every day as they go out. But if you, I mean, in all actuality though, if you're in a non-violent protest and for no reason you get scooped up and someone's not looking, I mean, it might be a handy way to get out. Or, or like China or someplace. Of not course, yeah, US, absolutely, absolutely. they would never do but, that. Uh, you don't fuck around with cops. Or if you're unlawfully restrained. I mean, criminals do use handcuffs too. Here's a binder clip right there. Uh, yes, indeed, binder clip. That'll work very well. So, wow, how are we doing on time? we got to keep moving along a little bit. Shall we try to, you know what, ask us in the Q&A room if you want to see uh, popping out of double locks, or ask us up in the lockpick village. We can, we can actually pick out of the double lock. But you're going to learn even more other double lock techniques in a minute, possibly here. My favorite video escape, by the way, I just love to throw this in anytime I'm doing a handcuff talk. Uh, how many people know Renderman? Yeah. Renderman is a really, really skinny, really flexible fellow. And uh, he is able to do this, sometimes at parties, sometimes at, you know, Fed conferences and the like. It's funny that I mentioned Fed conferences because here as Jackalope cuffs him up, I've been told by my FBI buddies this video actually gets shown at Quantico now during trainings. Actual Renderman here. Just, you know, he's like, all right, so I'm going to get cuffed up here. You know, you got me going, you got me done up pretty well behind the back. I'm all in place. He's like, okay, here I am. No, nothing up my sleeves, nothing in my pockets, no special trickery. Just a little bit of light diet. Push him up my wrist a little and go zip, 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 wham. <laughs> and of course, that trademark fedora of his always has his tools and everything and his picks up inside the brim. I think he keeps a flash drive with a backtrack install up there. <laughs> so yeah, way to go, Renderman. So, how are we on time? We're, we're not bad on time. That double lock, though, when we keep talking about how the double lock should be a, a secondary mechanism that's kind of hard to, to attack and mess around with, uh, there are some physics involved, however, that can be exploited. Tran, you want to talk some more about that? Yeah, sure. So, as mentioned before, the double locking bar is a metal bar that when you use the, the little the little uh, post on the end of a handcuff key to push that bar across, that bar will prevent the paw from moving up and down. You can either pick that open or you can use a little bit of physics. Does everyone know who that is? Exactly, the apple. Isaac Newton. Next. There's something called the whack attack. <laughs> Because that bar is made of metal and has mass, everyone knows objects in motion want to stay in motion. So what you can do is actually whack the handcuff and cause and the momentum or the inertia of that double locking bar will want to continue moving. So if you whack it in the right direction, you can just pop it back into the reset position. And I'll try to demo that real quick. Yeah. Who saw my, my very first DEF CON talk ever at DEF CON 13, was it? Agent X did this on stage. Anybody see that? Yes. Wow, some old timers here. So, so here's a pair of handcuffs that are not double locked. You can tell by because it's you can tighten it. What you do is use the end of a handcuff key. There's a little post on the end. Just click it in. Oh, this one's broken. Yeah. Use the other side. Just be gentle. These are yours. Yeah. They're both yeah. My, mine are fucked up, dude. When you bang them too many times, it's like bumping a lock. Eventually, it's just, it's just dead. I'll just use these pink. I'll just use these pink handcuffs. That was what you really wanted all along, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. I made these myself. <laughs> so using the post at the end of the key, I just engaged the double lock. The handcuff is not going to tighten at all. All you have to do is smack it against something really hard, like uh, padlock or an anvil or a rock. You know, like the anvil you keep in your pocket all the time. <laughs> and now you can over, yeah. you can over yeah. tighten it. 
Very, very nice. So he just unset the double lock just by smashing down really hard. Physics! It works, bitches! <laughs> Now, there are other handcuffs that try to, uh, they have countermeasures for this. One way of doing that is to have a plastic piece. The plastic piece doesn't have enough mass for you to, when you whack it, it doesn't have the same inertia, so it's not going to move. So that's one way of doing it, using plastic. And then there's another technique uh, that the, the Yule handcuffs, one of our favorite handcuffs, they utilize. There's almost no mass in that double locking bar. And in fact, the double locking bar and the spring is the same piece of metal. So there's almost no mass right there, and it's v extremely difficult. Actually, I don't think that we've ever been able to no. use the whack attack to unset the double lock. No, we never have. Yeah, we're, we're going to come back to Yules a little later. They really are probably our favorite cuff ever. Yeah. Who has seen these handcuffs before? Who knows, who knows what a medical lock is? Yeah. A medical lock is actually a very high security lock, I think one of the best brands here in the US. And they actually put one of those on a handcuff. So for picking, you're a bit out of luck with those. <laughs> but as a company, you should be a little careful with on what cuff you put your high security medical lock on. Because what they used here is a standard peerless handcuff, which is basically what we see before. So we have this high-end locking cylinder on it, so here we have again a, a double, a not now double locked cuff. You actually need a special tool to double lock it because they put this clumsy lock on it. So I'm applying the double lock just the normal way. So now it's locked. And I stranded it before. Oops. Okay. I should have used mine. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't want to break my cuffs. He can break his own, though. Because that housing is just high-impact high, high impact plastic. But it is just plastic. You can crack it off. You can use yours. Actually, the ones you have, is that a metal housing on the Desmo one? Oh, this is the same design with the Desmo lock. This is a European lock. And it's used on many of the slot machines. So you can tell it's, I would say, even more secure than the medical. So let's try it with this one here. Oops, that's a demo effect, I guess. Yeah, okay. There we go. So it took... <laughs> it took us three efforts, okay. But you see, we opened the double lock without using this high security lock at all. And now we can shim it. So this $200 cuff has basically the same security as any other one. <laughs> so there was also... Another thing you were going to tell us about cuffs you brought with us, right? And regarding that double lock trickery with the German cuff. Yeah, that's another double lock fail. You see, in Germany, we have ba usually basic normal cuff with a slightly different key, but it's the set principle is basically the same. This one here has been used in the past, I think, until 2005 or something, and they're still around. So they stopped making them now, but they're still around. And for, for 20 years or something, those were around. And the nice thing about this is that they are the only cuff that I know of that's in police use which you can escape from without any tool at all. <laughs> <laughs> I won't show it on hand because the demo is so effective in the last one, but okay. let's see. So what I'm, do what I'm doing is, you, you remember the pictures from before, here's the double lock, you can activate it with a finger, that's actually clever design, so the police officer doesn't have to use the top of his handcuff key, he can just activate the double lock like this. But what I do is, by pushing in the bow a little, like almost a complete click, but not really. So it moves down the ratchets as far as possible, and then put in the double lock. Push in, push it in, in even more. So the double lock goes against the ratchets and holds them down, and the cuffs open. <laughs> So this, of course, again, is possible if the double lock hasn't been engaged before, but the slamming or ramming just works nice on these. So slam them open, use the double lock, and escape without any tool at all. Very nice. Oh, but now they have new ones. <laughs> yeah. But don't be too afraid, those new ones, oh, oh yeah. to skip them. This is a very difficult design. They have a three-bitted key, and they're very expensive and everything in sort. This will be the ultimate handcuff ever. 
but they had a nice design flow again. The three-bitted key use, is used on the palms, but it's not used on the double lock and there's no shim protection. So actually you can open them like the other one. So if you go to Germany and are in some bad guys have the cops cuffs. <laughs> because German police, of course, never, never would uh, cuff you unlawfully. So don't be afraid too much to go to Germany, either German without a tool or with the normal tools. <laughs> Do you want to show the one last three-bitted uh, fail on the Kyung Changs as well, the next slide? Oh yeah, and we have another fail because we, I think you will be talking about the Kyung Changs with the three poles, the normal ones. But they also make a very good one, which even is better than the German three pole one, because it has the she sheets of metal reaching up to the bow. So you can't shim it because there are three parts, you need a three bitted shim, and who has a three bitted shim who can improvise one in seconds. But one nice thing we found out, I think two years ago or something, and published it on the Congress as a zero day exploit for handcuffs. <laughs> I think that in Korea they still know, don't know it because they don't watch our videos. There's one little glitch. If you do the same thing which I did with the Cleuso just, like pushing in the bow almost a click, then the three poles appear here without the sheets between. So you can put in a straight tool, hold them down and escape from the cuff. So just in case you get encounter one of those, be sure to know that. Very, very awesome. Are we glad Ray made the journey over here to talk about some of this? So if all these uh, these techniques for having you know better cuffs kind of fail, how do they make you know how do police around here try to deal with the idea of oh I want a better quality cuff? The two most common brands you're going to see in the U.S. Um, but by far is going to be the most popular is going to be the Smith and Wesson, and then Peerless also are going to be pretty popular as well. Uh, Republic Arms and then Safari Land you'll see around the world. But it all comes down to money for a lot of these things. So if you're going to spend less money on manufacturing, you're not going to get as high a quality of product most of the time. So these are just a little better made, just like any other lock. They have less tolerances, and the less tolerance you have, the easier, um, uh, you know, the harder is rather to exploit the lock. And then here are some examples of some of the higher end locks here. Now, as you guys know, if you've ever done any lock picking, you know, up in the lock pick village, a higher quality lock doesn't always mean, you know, it's unpickable. It just means you have to try a little harder. So that thin shim technique that Ray was showing earlier, where you actually have to insert the shim and seat it kind of deeper by clicking yourself tighter, you can do that on high quality cuffs like Smith & Wesson and Peerless, if you're lucky and if you're not too drunk on camera here. But yeah, I can sink a shim down. I just have to over tighten myself. And you can still get out of those. And that's open. That's what a standard cops can use in Vegas. So if the, even those sort of techniques kind of fail, if the idea of, oh, like, you know, we'll just make it tighter tolerance, if that still doesn't buy you complete protection, if someone knows any of these tricks, what do they actually do in reality to make a standard cuff better? Well, usually what they wind up doing is putting multiple paws in. Ray had touched on this a second ago. Do you want to shim or key me out of that side? Because I'm feeling kind of like a douche up here. So putting in multiple paws, like Dave could reach in and pick this right now, because again, it's, it's a heavier cuff, but it only has one paw. This kind, so you know, like a Hyatt's brand or an ASP, a Chicago handcuff. Can you guys see that? There are actually two paws in there. Now you might be able to shim that, thank you, pretty effectively, but you can't reach in with like a pick or a paper clip or something like that. You might trip one paw, but not the other. And the same thing is carried even further with other brands that use like triple paws. A lot of Hyatt cuffs from the UK have these, the Kyung Chang's from Korea. So again, multiple paws trying to reach in, hitting some, you might not hit all of them. The Yules, oh, Tran, tell, tell us them, tell them just about how badass the Yules take this. So we mentioned that just because you have multiple paws, that makes it harder to pick, but doesn't necessarily make it harder to shim. Well, the Yule handcuffs, they went completely crazy with these this, this design. They basically put a metal a metal blade in between the uh, the shim, so you would need a split shim to get in there. They went even further. They have these flanges that crimp over, and these ridges. So when you even if you had a multi-tipped shim, those flanges will direct the tips of those shims against a ridge or an edge. It can, those sh the, sh the shim you stick in there will never reach those paws. And also that metal blade going down goes through the entire um, body of the, the handcuff too, so your key has to have a split in it. 
to be able to reach around through the uh, the blade.